Thank you guys for coming back after your break. Uh, basically what we're going to do, we're now going to do the aero install. Okay, now Sandin's going to be down there doing it on the floor because it's just so easy that anybody can do it, right? No. It takes a professional to install the aero products. But I'm going to stand up and actually tell you guys about it as he does it. The one thing to keep in mind, everything that we just told you about conventional goods, just throw that out of your mind. Just forget everything we just said. Now, Mohawk Industries on aero says you guys do not have to seam seal the seams. So remember the statement I told you, unless I tell you, I'm telling you, you don't have to seam seal the seams on it. Uh, the Aero product is adhered around the perimeter and down the seams with either tape or adhesive. Our tape is a four inch wide, excuse me, four inch wide double face tape uh, manufactured by 3M. It actually has a polyester liner on the inside of it. So as you release the adhesive, the adhesive doesn't get all gummy and everything else, so there is a liner in there, meaning you can pull it back up off the floor and not leave a huge mess down on the floor if you position it in the wrong place. Uh, the other thing is, as you put the tape down, it will go around the perimeter. He'll then bring the two pieces in, and then he'll mark for his seam, flip it back open, place the tape down. The other application is actually with our glue, as Phil was talking about earlier. Uh, the glue is going to come in a one-gallon container, one gallon container, basically it's got the little pop top on it, a little bitty hole on the inside of it. The application will be with a seven inch applicator that actually comes with the box of adhesive. So instead of the roller, because we've tried this a multitude of different ways, the guys like to trial, the guys like to use rollers, this is something kind of a little bit different. In a residential environment with raised baseboard, the guy trying to use a trial gets a lot of glue up underneath the baseboard. There's just no way around it. We tried it with a flat trial, we tried it with a teeth trial. Didn't work. Then you give the guy a roller and you put him on in there with raised base or flat base and he gets glue all over the baseboards because it'll roll right up next to it. The application of a roll on or spread on with the base already in place was very difficult to come up with. So we started looking at different applicators. This is a deck stain applicator is basically what this is if, if you go to try to find what this is. It's got little edges on it that actually keep the adhesive off the baseboards where you actually cannot touch it. The neat thing about this, it's pretty simple. It's a push, not a pull. It's kind of like the glue gun. So when you apply this, basically you'll take the handle, screw it on the end of it, and then uh, go around the perimeter with a zigzag motion, and then you basically push that all the way around. The one thing that you'll notice as the adhesive goes down, if you preload your pad, and actually get put adhesive on your pad before you do your zigzag around the perimeter, it'll slide really easy because it's already kind of preloaded up like you're going to paint your walls. Um, the coating is seven inches. You don't have to go any farther out and you want a good coat all the way around. So now basically with the Aero product, when you go to bring it in, it is a kind of a normal layout or normal install. You'll bring it and position it into place. Once you have it positioned into place, then you're going to basically flip it back out. And remember we always talked about row cutting. Forget that one too. It is a straight edge from the back product. The reason for the straight edge from the back, for us to have a dimensionally stable product and a product that we are putting a lifetime lay flat warranty on, it has to be fairly rigid. Rigid meaning once it's laying flat, the two edges need to be cut fairly straight so they come together because it does not like compression at the seams. So basically what we've done is laid the two pieces in, he's folded them back, then we're basically gonna measure about an inch inch and a half, two inches, whatever you guys are happy with off the edge of the material back into the arrow product. Um, and then he's going to put a, a little mark. Once he puts his mark, he's going to mark down through here in a couple, three different places. Uh, the straight edge that he's using is actually a two meter straight edge. It's a roll up straight edge. It packs really easy in our stuff. The other thing is you are straight edging through attached cushion product. The arrow product has a three eighths inch, 32 ounce, uh, needle punch polyester pad. So therefore I'm cutting through 3 8 inch of material. So a normal razor blade with a normal regular groove straight edge, the straight edge raises the knife up so high that you'll have to make two passes when you're cutting it. Pretty simple, no big deal. Most of the installers do that anyway when you're straight edging from the back. One to cut through the primary and cut through the latex, the next one to come back through where you make sure not to shorten up the arms. When you're straight edging, if you push down so hard that you go through in one motion, you have a tendency to cut the yarns. As I press down on the straight edge, the yarns will kind of flare out underneath. The flare out on this side, if my straight edge is sitting here and I cut all the way through, I'll end up cutting the yarn short. So I have yarns that come up and then yarns that are what we refer to as J-cut, 
where at the seam, two little short yarns come together and I end up with a valley down the length of the seam. That is an inappropriate cut. When I'm cutting, I want to cut it cleanly at the base of the yarns and not halfway through the yarns when I'm making the cut. So as San is making the cut down through here, uh, because that uh, straight edge is a little bit thinner, it actually makes a thin, easy cut. It can go through in one pass. The one thing about the pad, it is not a tr traditional fiber pad makeup. When we are selling you guys traditional fiber pad, as we're selling you that style pad, it's made up of a lot of different yarns being needle punched into one. With the Aero Cushion, it is a 100% PET product. It's the same denure, it's the same thickness, it's the same material. So as you're making the cuts, you're cutting the same thing. There's not additional material in there, so therefore it's going to cut much cleaner. Everybody's always said over years, you trim down fiber pads, you change your blades every three or four feet just because it dulls out so quick. We don't see that happening on Arrow because it doesn't have all that hodgepodge of stuff in the pads. Also, you're not cutting through any type of latex or anything else. Arrow is 100% PET, so as he goes through, it is a very clean cut as he's going through. And check that out. He kind of old schooled it a little bit, basically just used something to mark his tabs. This technology is stuff we've been doing it forever. For the guys that's been doing it for over 20, 30 years as far as the installation side, these are just old school straight edge techniques. The one thing that I will say, and we have found out, if you have seams that are over, say, 20, 30 feet in length, which we have done with Arrow, there is no restriction as far as how big Arrow can go in. It can be as big as you want. Go back to the old snap of chalk line and straight edge the chalk line technique um, instead of trying to just chase the, uh, the straight edge down the edge of it. So if you snap a chalk line, use a three foot straight edge, you can actually get a straighter edge than you can by using a 12, 12 foot straight edge. Um, simply because on that three foot span, you're getting good clean cuts as you go. Um, so as he's finishing up his cuts, um, he will then lay the arrow into position after he finishes up. So, any other questions? You guys are awfully quiet out there. <laughs> All right. All right, Sandin's getting it positioned in the place. After he's got it positioned, basically he's going to flip it over and then put a mark where the seam's going to be located at. And you guys tip out here? I'll help. All right, I had a question. Did they, did they sell the, the, the question was, did they sell the tape with the carpet? The way that we're selling this out for the Aero product to have warranty, the tape, the Aero tape or the Aero adhesive has to be used. What we're seeing most of the dealers do, it's being sold as a unit to the end user. So it's not actually a, a cost back to the installer. It's part of it, just like it was a, a vinyl install. And we've been using kind of this analogy for a while. A vinyl install has to take a very specific seam sealer. So if you have a vinyl, you have a seam sealer, that AB has to be sold to go with that product. The reason for that selling it that way is the warranty. So with our Aero product, to get the warranty, it's got to be the Aero adhesive or the Aero glue, so that'll kind of work hand in hand. Uh, so that will be something that your dealers will make a, de a decision on how they want to handle that. Now, notice Sanin has grabbed a positioning tool, okay? Everybody uses this as a something other than what it was designed for. A kicker is designed to position and set material into place. It is not designed to stretch with. So as we are making the seam, Sandin will use the kicker to kind of position the seam in place, simply because that's kind of how we do. So basically what he's looking at doing, he's going to actually use the liner. So as he goes to make the seam, he'll actually grab that liner, pull it up, and he's going to pull it in between the seam it almost acts like your seaming iron. So right now basically what he's doing is dry fitting everything together to make sure he is happy with what it's going to look like. And he looks happy so far. A little bump down at the bottom. All 
All right. One little thing that we've been telling guys for a while, once you go to put your tape down, notice how he kind of flipped the edges under as he put it down. The reason for doing that makes it easier to peel back off. If you have an issue with peeling the liner off the tape, you can actually take and dog gear the edge of the tape. So if I pull this up, you remember that polyester liner we were talking about, it's actually embedded in here. I can't just grab this and pull the liner off of it, but if I dog gear it over, kind of flip it over on its edge, I then reach back around to the underside and grab the paper. The adhesive will stick to the adhesive. I'll kind of pull this up. And then I can actually release the liner out. So that's kind of the polyester liner that you're seeing that is actually up underneath it. So that little dog gear allows you to actually pull that liner off a lot easier. Um, that way you can actually flip a little dog gear on each of the corners, pull the liner off and then go. So as Santa is putting the seam together, see how he's pulling the liner up and the liner is actually going to pull up and pull the yarns up out of the way. If you're using the adhesive around the perimeter, we still recommend that you use the tape down the seams. Simply because if you're putting it into glue with no liner on it, this is a residential product. So you're doing a residential product kind of like a glue down install. Those yarns will lay over and have a potential of getting trapped. So you almost need that liner to kind of slide everything up to be able to pull it up and out of the way. So as you're pulling that up and out of the way, the yarns will come up. Now the neat thing about the Aero product is if you were to look, now he's working the seam down there, where he's working it out there, I can come back up here and play around and if I don't like something, I should never be able to leave a seam that doesn't look good because me as the installer can pull it right back out of it. It's not hot melt. This is pressure sensitive tape. So once I put pressure down on it, it is going to be more difficult to pull back up. But if I don't have pressure on it, still a little aggressive, I can pull around, but I can still pull it back up out of it. I can go back up and down a couple, three times, and that's kind of the magic number. When there's more fuzz on the tape than there is grip, you need to reapply tape. That's where I was telling you that liner, you can then pull it off and put it back down. So you can go up and down with it a couple different times. The other thing that we mentioned earlier and Phil had made mention of, once one side's in, because I'm not worried about stretching it, I can actually divide the room in half. Uh, one of the largest ones that we've done recently um, was about a uh, about 25 feet long, about 30 feet wide, had two and a half drops in it, sectional sofa, got the first drop in, moved the sectional right on top of it, put the other two, uh, drop and a half in, and then kind of separated everything back out again. Um, there again, those longer seams, we did do the, uh, the chalk line technique to make it across to chalk line it and then straight edge it. Uh, but the mindset of an install becomes completely different. Um, if I'm installing a normal conventional action back, the living room hallway go in first. That's just part of it. That's how we always thought about it. Living room goes in, hallway attaches to it, all the bedrooms stretch out and away from it. With the Aero product, I can literally start anywhere that I want. I can install every bedroom the living room, leave the hallway exposed for the plumber that happens to be there the same day that I am, walking back and forth up and down the hallway, and then come back, because I'm straight edging the seams, simply tab the doorway seams, flip them back, straight edge them. The other thing is, doorway seams are always difficult to do from the installation standpoint, because when you try to flip it back to straight edge it, you're already kind of stretched in, so you can't pull it back far enough to kind of keep that banana shape out of it when you straight edge it. Arrow's not stretched in. So it's under no tension. So I can pull it as far back in the hallway or as far back in the room as I need to, to straight edge it and drop it back down. So that back again, it's almost to a vinyl mindset as far as how I'm going to install it. I need it to go in, I need it to lay flat, okay? And the seams have to look good. That's kind of the two main focuses with, with the Aero product. So as you can see, as Santa's going around the perimeter of the room, he's simply just taking, and like I did here on this side, pulling the liner off, rubbing it down with your, with your hands. Now, there's always been a question, now what am I gonna trim it with? You can either trim it with your razor knife, always being careful not to cut the baseboards. Miss Consumer does not like big scratches and stuff along her baseboards. Conventional wall trimmer, which 
Sam will be using in just a moment. He can actually trim it with a conventional wall trimmer. The pad acts like the tack strip. So the, t the, the tack pad actually jacks the carpet up in the air. So the bottom foot of the trimmer will actually set directly on the pad so you can actually push it right around the perimeter of it. Also, we'll do a little thing showing you guys with the trimmer. Um, the handle on the trimmer is flipped over toward the wall. So as Sanon's going up that wall, he's actually going to use his left hand because he's going to his left, kind of like we were talking about with the cushion back cutter. The ergonomics of your left hand means you want to lay over. So as he goes, that actually pushes down and flat over to the wall. He'll never pull that trimmer out up next to the corner of the walls again. Then it can be tucked back in with a wall trimmer or uh, he's got his hawk bill. I'm going to tuck it in with his hawk bill. So that's as simple as it is as far as doing the installation with the Aero product. Perimeter tape or perimeter adhered. No seam sealers necessary. No stretch in necessary. Trim with a conventional wall trimmer and then either tuck it to the baseboard or under the baseboard. Um, and basically your raised base, cushions at 3 8 it will snap down underneath the raised base. In other words, you don't have to worry about trimming it perfectly even with the base each time. You can tuck some in. Or if you've got flat base, conventional trimmer can be set to cut it just like regular, regular conventional goods. All right, guys, uh, a couple things that we're going to kind of go over with you because I was waiting for the questions to come up and they didn't, so I'll kind of add my own questions in. One of the big questions that we've been getting is in regards to transitions. How do you transition arrow to whatever else you're transitioning to? So I will kind of hit you some highlights on what that would be. If you're transitioning arrow to a hard surface, say an engineered floor, a ceramic tile, anything like that, if the hard surface is thicker than the arrow pads, so in other words, thicker than the 3 8 pad, you simply trim it right up to it. No trim, nothing necessary, okay? If the surface is lower, so say you're going up to a vinyl, then any standard glue down trim can be used. So you can't use your tap down trim that's got your little teeth up in it, so not your normal stretch in trim. You have to use the tap down that doesn't have the grippers underneath the bottom of it. So basically, mentality is glue down transitions, okay? One of the neat things we've done here recently is for you guys that are familiar with our Instaform trims that we have on our laminate wood side, where you can actually cut three different profiles, you actually use it as a threshold. You can actually put that trim down, don't trim it at all, and then tuck right up next to the edge of it without having a tack strip or anything behind it. Basically makes a nice wood transition where those guys want that type thing. Um, so any of the metals, the rubbers, the tap downs, anything like that. If I have um, a hardwood floor, I can actually do a turn and tack. Um, I'm gonna sneak over here and grab a piece. If I have the edge here, where's our straight edge center? Gotcha. So say I'm going to do a turn and tack on the material. I can simply take a straight edge. I'm going to measure back about two inches off the edge. Once I've measured back, I'm then going to take my knife and basically score the pad. I'm not actually cutting all the way through. I'm just scoring it. Then I'm going to take the edge and then literally pull the fleece off the back of it. Now this is pretty, hang on a second, Stan. Once I pull the fleece off the back of it, I can then roll it straight over and turn and tack it to the floor without having that extra bulk of the pad being there. So now all of a sudden I can go straight down to a vinyl floor. The other thing that you can do with that on a staircase, say you have an open sided stair, <clears throat> you can actually make a stair runner going up either side. Measure over your two inches on either side. Uh, we did do actually a staircase like this recently and it actually turned out beautiful. We were able to turn it directly up to the spindles to kind of work it back and forth to get it the same size because unfortunately sometimes those spindles aren't exactly the same distance from the wall over to the spindle. So we were able to hit that all the way up. So this will be your turn down if you're going directly down to vinyl. So you can actually perform the same type technique that you would on a conventional goods. Um, if I have a job where I have sold the bedroom in the arrow, but I still have air, uh, regular conventional in the, uh, in the hallway, this same technique, you trim it just like this. You then run your pad from your conventional install up and then that will actually hot melt directly onto the action back because with that being polyester, the hot melt will actually stick right on the back of the fleece. There's no problems. 
Uh, for the guys that are familiar with the, uh, the, the uh, cool glides, uh, which is, are the RF frequency irons, you can use those as well. We've actually done a couple different installs with it, so they work on it. There's a lower melt, melt, the lower melt, hot melt, but it will still adhere itself to the PET backing, so that's a, a little bit different, so you can use either, either of those. Um, <clears throat> the other question we've been getting stairs, and I kind of stopped sanding and I'll move back out of the way. Um, stair application is pretty simple. No tack strip, no pad, staples only. So if I'm going to do an upholstered stair, I'm simply going to staple it at the bottom, staple it up underneath the nose of the step, and then staple it back into the crotch of the next step. If I have a waterfall step, uh, you guys probably won't do very many of, the, many of those here, but if you do get a waterfall step, a piece of the tape straight across the nose of the step, so you're stapling into the crotch, the tape holding the nose, then stapling back to the next part of the crotch. Basically each time you just got something held in place on the nose, whether it staples underneath the nose of it or the uh, tape on the top of it. All of the rest of your cuts are identical to conventional goods. The little V cut off the nose at the bottom of the stair nosing, the little V cut in the back, all of your cuts are the same. And basically you can staple straight through the pad. Remember, pad's only 3 8 inch thick, Standard electric tacker is a 7 16 staple. So over half the staple is actually going through the pad and into the wood underneath. And it will hold on very well. So, so for the folks that were here uh, earlier, they actually, uh, we had to kind of pull and step and pull it off like you're putting off, pulling off a normal step when we pull this one off. Does that not smile on you when you contour? It doesn't. Believe it or not, if you really think about doing a, a wrap on a conventional step, you're supposed to wrap the pad around the nose anyway to keep it from smiling because you don't want that abrupt break. Pad's already on it. So with the pad already being on it, it actually makes the, the curve more gentle and all, you're actually picking a pad up on the riser now. So you've beefed the riser out. So now you can make a harder crease because it's actually the extra little thickness. Uh, notice that uh, Sandin took just a, rubber, a regular plastic stair tool. The purpose of hitting that with the stair tool is you're actually just running a crease down it to give you a place when you staple in. Uh, the one thing that we've seen, you can actually crease it off and he'll actually spin, once he's made that cut, he'll spin it around and let you guys kind of see in the middle of it. You get the same crease line like there's a piece of tack strip there. Because basically what you've done is folded the pad and then creased the pad down. So just stepped it down and then you stapled into that spot. Uh, so it actually makes a fairly clean line. So what he'll do is he's going to kind of fold that and then he'll staple some to it. That way after we're done you guys can come up and kind of feel around on it and try to feel for the staples. Um, because that was one of the questions we always get is that indentation. The indentation or that movement is because they're actually stapling into the pad, not into just the, into the conventional carpet. With that denser pad on there, you won't get the dip. The other thing that you don't have to do is worry about putting all those tack strips around the spindles because to do it correctly, you need to fill that whole area in with tack strip where you can actually have something to staple to instead of filling it with pad. That's the number one kind of no-no that we see people do. Uh, with the arrow, you simply make all your cuts and staple it all into place. All right, so there's stairs. We covered transitions. Um, is there anything else you guys can think of? Guys, thank you very, very much for your, uh, your patience this afternoon, and uh, we appreciate it. Um, if you have any other questions, we'll kind of hang around for a little while afterwards. Uh, so you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys very much.